So, last time we learned about the most dangerous game, which is going around and uh, trying to kill three robots on this cruise ship. The same three robots, again and again. No, these are different robots. No, those, those, were, those, were, those were the same robots. Well, the actual more most dangerous game is about different robots, which we're doing now, so that we can get the keys to um, the keys to the secret uh, compartment. Yeah, That's those like up. guys in the book were stupid. The most dangerous game isn't humans; it's robots. <laughs> They're like humans but stronger. That's right. So when you go near one of these robots, the lock will appear in front, and you give it the key, and then it's boss time. I feel like, well, what if you just beat up the robot before you put the key in? Uh, it's in a case. You can't do that. Yeah. It ruins the market value. That's the entire point of it. I like how the sides of it are already scratched to hell. Yeah. So, we have loaded a new version of this map, which has new camera angles, as you can see. And also, you can't go up the, the ladder. But, um, yeah, right now we're fighting a, a Type J robot that's just a car. Um, but also it has a big laser. <laughs> oh, so that's how I got the scratches on the side. I parked too close to the curb. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So here I'm showing off the first person view. Um, I don't know if I talked about it before. It probably came up at once. Um, I don't use it much because it's really annoying going back and forth. But um, in these camera angles, it's basically the only way for you to see the robot at certain points of the map. Can you do anything in first person? Uh, that you couldn't do in the other one? No, not really. But... So you can attack, though, right? Oh, no. The right stick has been converted completely to camera movement, so you use it more to, like, get a better idea of your surroundings, and then you pull out to do combat. So, uh, yeah, so it just runs around. You can't really attack it until it stops, at which point it shoots the laser. If you're close enough, you can start doing, like, physical damage to it, but uh, maybe the most efficient way is to, like, shoot it so that it kind of knocks out for a second, run up and get your hits in. Mm -hmm. um, like the other Type J robots, once it's like out of commission for a minute, it takes significant damage if you do a focus attack on its head. So like the actual strategy for doing damage hasn't changed. It's just the mode by which these robots interact with you has changed. It seems like, it seems pretty <laughs> hard to get that like, to get close to it after it's stunned. It seems like a... Oh, okay, I guess it stays stunned for a little while longer than I thought. Yeah, it stays stunned for a bit, and you can kind of trick it into shooting the laser again by staying in front of it and then dodging out of the way. It doesn't do its full cycle if you do that, but it does give you more of an opportunity to attack. Was it stunned when you did that one, or was that... Or... I think it was... I don't think it was stunned. I think it's stunned because I did the focus attack on it, and okay. then it continued to be stunned. So it just did the regular amount of damage. Yeah. Uh, I think it still does the same amount of damage if you hit it. It's just if you're stunned, like, if it's stunned, you can just have an easier time. You don't have to deal with that, right? Okay. So you were lying to me earlier. Oh, uh, yeah. <sighs> That's the thing about being a secret agent, is sometimes you have to lie oh, okay. to protect those that you care about. I bet Chorps Away isn't even your real name. Mm, no, that one's real. <laughs> But, um, you know, I was thinking about it, right? Dr. Boskanovich invented these Type J robots, and eventually he would go on to invent the Jack, right? Mm hmm Do you think that this is the prototype for the Jack? Do you think that this is possibly what Jack could have ended up as? Um, I feel like the guys are a bit closer. Yeah, I, I would very much be curious about what the intermediate stages between this one and the Jack would be. Because I don't think there's a very clear A to B between those two. Yeah, except that it can stand up like a man, right? But, like, clearly it's a little more animal. It's yeah. got a lot more guns grafted to it. But, like, imagine, you know, you've got the same enemy, but it's like Jack, but Jack's a car now, right? Just running around. Right. What this is making me think of is, like, what if we had the Tekken Ridge Racer crossover? Okay. okay. Would that be badass or really badass? <laughs> I think it'd be really badass. I guess it gives the idea, I don't know how many of the Tekken characters know how to drive a car. Uh, well, Kuma, probably. Kuma, okay. definitely. 
Does on the does Jack in any of the games have a jungle camo skin? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Like in the first game, he like he's got like I, military fatigues. I yeah. think yeah. it's prototype Jack, in, like Tekken Tree or something. Yeah. Okay. Which was just the pilot swap of regular Jack. Yeah. But his name is P Jack, and that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> you know, as a kid, I always thought like, oh, this is like a peeing Jack. Wonder what that's about. <laughs> yeah. That'd be cool. I mean piss Jack. <laughs> that's like his taunt attack is that he pees on you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It stuns you if you get hit by it. Yeah, and that caused, like, a congressional hearing at the time. <laughs> right, it's an international incident. <laughs> yeah. You're right up there with um, George W. Bush when he puked on that diplomat. <laughs> They're like, oh, so it's fine for Gone to fart on you, but pe- suddenly peeing on your opponent is where we draw the line? <laughs> That's well, right. it's a robot who does it, so it's fine. Yeah, right. It's like that scene in Transformers. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, that is the only robot here in the basement. We now need to make our way back up to the main area of the ship, which means also that we're finally doing the last of the optional, uh, side objectives in this game. But you got all the gold coins, right? That's true. So, there's no point to this. Hmm. I don't know if that's true. Uh, maybe they'll give you a second gun. <laughs> Maybe. So, uh, first of all, I think uh, previously I said that I don't know when these robots uh, attack you. Uh, They attack you now. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) They were waiting for you to come back up so they could, like, ambush you on your way out of the elevator. Right. They wanted to hear the piano music first. Right. But you can also see um, all of the robots on this floor are now running to attack me because of the way that it's propped the enemies. (laughs) It Again, very weird setup in... The, in this part version of the the, the uh, cruise ship because all of these enemies aggro so hard off of nothing. <laughs> and there are like 20 of them. Yeah, right? Like that's the thing is like, you're like, oh, I'm going to fight like three or four of them, but you fight three or four of them four times. Time. Right, because they keep showing up and they keep running down from another floor being like, oh, you know, I heard 600 feet away that, you know, Tech and Zena Williams was here. I mean, to be fair, if this was happening, like, downstairs and I was, like, (laughs) upstairs, I would probably hear it. Right. Uh, Just like these guys. Yeah, but I wouldn't go for it. Like, I'm not looking to get killed by Tech and Zena Williams today. Yeah. Like, death by degrees? No tanks. I'll take my death in whole. I'd be like, I wish P-Jack was here. We all wish P-Jack was here. Too bad he's in the frickin' bathroom. (laughs) I don't, nasty little freak. (laughs) I mean, are there any Jacks that you would consider not nasty little freaks? I feel like they kind of all exist. Um, well, not to get political here, but uh, I'm a big (laughs) fan of the Jacks that uh, tried to blow up Hayachi. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, the P in P-Jack stands for political. <laughs> <laughs> they actually built that Jack to run for president. Yeah. It's which is just, also what the P stands for. It's just a Jack, but he has an American flag decal on his chest. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be so cool. Hey, I'd vote for him. I could definitely God. see I could definitely see P Jack being like uh fucking the wrestler Kane being like a local libertarian. Yeah. Imagine, like, the uh, presidential acceptance speech. The fucking political Jack just up on the stage and goes up to the mic, starts beating his chest, and flies off while screaming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, well, I feel like the big thing is, so, like, Dr. Bosconovich clearly has to pay to get, like, a custom-tailored suit because he's so large. But what he does is he rips off the shirt at the end of the speech and shows his American flag decal on his chest and mm-hmm. flies off. And that's, <laughs> like, that's what really gets the voters going. The right. first oh, American yeah. president with tearaway pants. <laughs> oh, yeah. That'd be so cool. That would be cool as shit. And, like, once you fly away, you can't debate them, right? Like, how are you going to contradict anything they said? They're mm-hmm. gone. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, people on Twitter would be having a field day with that. That's right. Senator P. Jack knows nothing about the American plight. He's a <laughs> robot. <laughs> you know, robots are people too, though, if you think about it. Yeah. Oh, damn. I mean, we know that the robots on this ship are actually real people repurposed to be cyborgs, so... Right, also the person he was debating, that's right, it's Noctis from Final Fantasy XV. He was also <laughs> running for president. Oh my god. See, now this is the sort of campaign I could get behind. Yeah, like, you just don't know who to vote for. They both look like you'd get, have a beer with them. Yeah, uh, when Noctis eats the hyper-realistic food, he's like, mmm, hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Also, Dr. Bosconovich is the vice president uh, candidate for Jack, right? We all agree. <laughs> oh, what was that? <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> I mean, it was a grenade that killed him, so. So what was that guy's deal? Um, you know, they don't explain. He doesn't get, we don't get any concept of why he's hanging out with two robots here in the freezer. I think maybe he was just, like, heating up, right? Uh, he's got, like, a fever. No, I get it. Like, anybody who's worked in a restaurant knows that you go into the freezer to cry. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, because then no one knows, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I get it. Mm-hmm. Anyways, we came in here for a, a thumbprint and a, and a big thing of canned beef. Maybe that's also what that guy was looking for. Oh, yeah, he was just hungry. Oh, yeah, he just ignored this corpse, I guess. <laughs> you should. <laughs> yeah, let's... Let's talk about why that guy stole there. So they took out the meat, right? All the meat's gone. Mm -hmm. So clearly something's been done with it. The giant rats got turned into food. They just left this guy here. Well, they have to wait for, like, the, you know, the naval police to come to check on the body. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. They, they don't want to like, touch it. he's already it. being preserved, right? They don't have to take him down to the basement where all the other, like, diplomats are being held, right? Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, I think that you shouldn't be able to use, like, the big health items that are in a can until you find a can opener item. <laughs> you know, that would have that would have changed this game a lot. I don't think for the better, but it would have certainly changed this game. But I feel like, you know, uh, a, a master spy must have enough tools to at least consider having a can opener already, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it's like a Swiss Army knife or something. Yeah, I feel like they would be the type to have a multi-tool. Yeah. Like, you know, you watch a James Bond movie, Q never explains it, but I assume plenty of those tools could be used for practical applications, too, you know? Bond, this is called a leather man. <laughs> <laughs> Nina Williams is the kind of person who would have an everyday carry. I don't know, Wait, but... Both in fiction and in real life, it seems the only uh, tool set a spy needs is being an alcoholic. <laughs> you know? Essential. And that's why, I feel like maybe that's why Tech and Zena Williams has been having such an issue, is because very clearly, she's like... She hasn't had a drop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She drinks water. She's like, ooh, I want some essential oils. Like, no, <laughs> girl. <laughs> She does love essential oils. If there's one thing you can say about Tech is Nina Williams. <laughs> you need a nice Chardonnay. Anyways, I really like that coordinated attack they do when you pass by them where they both shoot their fist out at you. <laughs> Very yeah. cool if you don't know how to get out of the way. They should, like, tangle their fists together and then they have to spend a while getting them undone. Oh, yeah. I feel like that's an attack the Marx Brothers would come up with trying to kill the other Marx Brothers. <laughs> right, or like the Stooges. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I've, I've seen a bit of the Stooges. They do not come up with a lot of plans to kill each other. They just go for it. <laughs> Neither do, do the, the Marx Brothers. Brothers. They're family. <laughs> God damn it. I feel like them being family makes it more likely that they would like try to kill each other at least at like the holidays right like yeah i mean you, uh, you you nimbusol you ruined the thanksgiving dinner i'm gonna kill you, you yeah know? you voted for noctis from final fantasy 15 <laughs> <laughs> we said we'd all vote for the same guy you dumb knucklehead <laughs> and do not ask where curly was on january 6th <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you that gun isn't just for the crackers. 
Yeah, if you were ever wondering um, why they had to use Curly Joe or Shimp, uh, there's your answer. <laughs> oh, wow. Show yourself! He was so, just hanging out. Yeah, unfortunately, he was just hanging out. I assume he thinks it's weird that all of his friends have been replaced by robots at this point. And, you know, now he's dead, so. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's why I came up here, to get a little bit of alone time. This is another prime crying spot for anybody yeah. who's worked in a restaurant going to the crow's right. nest. Or, or a cruise ship. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so that's the final uh, fingerprint that we need to get. Oh. So, at this point, we have collected all collectibles. That's so... It still just feels incredibly fucked to kill a man just for his fingerprint. Yeah, but, uh. you know... What do you think society is built on? Mm. That's right. He controls the fingerprints, controls the world. Uh, yeah. As they have, say. You, have you ever listened to any Johnny Cash, my friends? <laughs> <laughs> so with that out of the way, we can finally focus on the robots that really matter and finding them again. Does it give you any sort of hints of where, like, the big robots you're supposed to fight are? No, you're supposed to have remembered. Oh, okay. I love taking notes. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, for the first one is, like, in the room next to you once you get that hint. Mm -hmm. So, like, you already have sort of a start on there. But the other two, you have not had a reason to go back to those rooms, um since you got back like you run by this one which we'll be coming up to because this is where we entered back in from the uh from the cruise ship but yeah they otherwise they just kind of expect you to run around and remember or just stumble on them was there like a here. robot here the first time we were here yeah oh, okay robots always been here i guess it just didn't register maybe i thought it was fine art yeah it does like it, it it doesn't really stand out in the way where you go like, oh, this is like a thing until you've been to Prison Island where other robots are in these kinds of uh, shells. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just shooting to make sure the guns work. <laughs> They, were, they really went all out on this one. That's right. This is the gun, <laughs> J-Robot. <laughs> so yeah, it's main attacks with these miniguns. It does like a thing where it either follows you or it does like a, a move from down to up to shoot you, uh, which comes out pretty fast, a little hard to dodge. Also has this long um, flamethrower attack. <laughs> so the... The optimal strategy is to stand just out of range and shoot them until they, um, until they short circuit, and then you can get at their head. I th it's kind of fucked that they made a gun robot where the weakness was also guns. <laughs> yeah, but you know, well, I mean, like, the idea is that it could shoot you, but when it's doing this, like, little flamethrower attack, it's got no chance. Do you feel if you tackle, like, these robot bosses without guns, it's just kind of way too tedious? Yes. Um, this one maybe not as much, but certainly, uh, the first one I feel like without a gun or a way to, like, really get in on it. Oh my god, I forgot about the missile attack. <laughs> but it doesn't hit you very well, it's only for if you're far away. It can't hit you when you're right up in front of it. They have such a funny arc. It's like a Looney Tunes style arc. Yeah. Where it's like a yeah. It's a very cartoon bomb sort of scenario. But yeah, like the fir the the first one we fought definitely is the most obnoxious to do without guns. I would say just getting in close is very difficult. You end up having to do like pot shots at it um, while it runs by you, which is just inefficient. This one is just, like, it has range in a way that, like, guns make it significantly easier because you don't have to wait out this attack the whole time. So, wait, this is, like, like, J-Gun Robot. What was the first one? Uh, they don't, I don't think they have, like, code words. I'm gonna say Car Robot, though. Oh, okay. J-Drive. Yeah. 
Oh, that's a good name, yeah. You know, Dr. Bosconovich should get someone more inventive to name his robots. He keeps coming up with J names, right? It's like <laughs> Type J, Jack. Mm -hmm. The J of Spade, the robot. Right. <laughs> That was the most fucked up one, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know why we bailed it. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, this is the perfect robot for Let's Play. Mm -hmm. I had to kill him. His jokes were too funny. Yeah. <laughs> now the piss robot, though. <laughs> yeah, now P Jack. <laughs> I get, you know, all the Jacks are built for the same reason, right? Do we ever think that there might be Jacks that exist for other purposes? Like, at a Jack that's his assistant or something? I, I could definitely imagine... Maybe not built for the same purpose, but I could definitely imagine the kind of Jack that, like... You know, got its way out, lives in the countryside somewhere, tries to keep out of sight, works on a farm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hangs like out. Like the later Terminator movies? Uh... <laughs> you know, I think there was a Jack that just lived in the countryside out, out, like, just living his life, like, finding a home. Uh, that's Jack got blown up by a fucking laser from a satellite in space. Yeah. <laughs> Poor old rancher Jack. Wow, that's so tragic. Well, that, that laser actually came down because he was one of those, like, government-funded farms that was, like, specifically built to not farm certain crops, and it turns out he started, like, farming corn. Uh, what are the Tekken, like, wooden statue guys? Uh, Mokujin. I feel like that's, like, what happens when a jack tries to go analog. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I get that. Anyway, Chirps, I, uh, I agree with what you said. This world has got more than enough corn. Yeah. Yeah. Too much corn. That's why they're making that fake corn, the corn. <laughs> okay, the, well, huh? oh, yeah. Yeah. Those, those little, like, those little, like, couscous kind of things, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, are those, like, when you get, like, the tiny corn on the cob from a Chinese restaurant? No, that's baby corn. Oh, okay. I, like I just that. started thinking about the Aqua Teen Hunger Force Stung Doctor Strange behold corn thing. Mm-hmm. I'm a little well, more I mean, into that we one. Should, we should all behold corn. That's right. They introduced the concept of a freak on a leash to us. <laughs> that's true. Ah, our old stomping ground. That's right. So... Like any good fighting arena, there's also a robot here. Right, this is the janitor. Yeah, and here you can see the animation of the lock coming out. I don't like that. You know, me neither. <laughs> I will say, though, um, given the other two bosses, I'm going to say that this is the most interesting of the three J-Robot fights that we have on this ship. And you'll see why in just a moment. I was really thinking you were going to say that this was going to be the worst one, and I already no. figured the others seem bad enough as it is. No, this one's cool. At least they're all different, which is yeah. more than I expected. Yeah, for yeah, no, sure. Definitely the benefit of them being different, I think, makes this less of a slog. Mm -hmm. There are definitely lesser PS2, PS1 games that would definitely have it just be the same pain-in-the-ass fight three times. Yeah, all the J-Robot fights have been different throughout this game, which has been much appreciated. There's something about this particular music. Also, hey, is that that fucking disco ball in its hand? Uh, <laughs> anyway, there's something about that particular music that really feels like it just came directly out of Blue Stinger. It's cool. So, um, this one is a cage match versus this robot, and it does basically all close-range attacks, and also its electrified hand can electrify the cage that you're fighting in. All the attacks are, like, they, they like, spins around in the arena, or things like that, just kind of, like, to force you into the wall, or at least, like, kind of push you into a corner where it can attack you more, uh, rel uh more easily. Uh, the other interesting thing is the electrified hand isn't just like for attacks. If you touch it or you run into it or you like kick it, you do get slightly shocked by it. So it does kind of like cool. behoove you to keep track of where you're hitting. Th that's a little more than I really would have given the game credit for. 
yeah, no, every time I fight, do this fight, I'm like, I'm shocked that that, like, p attention to detail is there, because I just, like, start attacking, and then it's like, oh, wait, oops. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, like if, there. If, if anything, yeah, if anything, this game, like, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> nice. Oh, Hell God. yeah. I'm just that, sad that you move. can't, like, knock him into the fence. <laughs> yeah, he does not take the same damage, I don't think. I mean, it's very fitting that the ultimate move is the, like, five-year-old kids start swinging their arms in front of them. Hey, it's your it's your fault if you run into this, dumbass. That's right. Honestly, yeah. if a character got that move in Tekken, like, that game's competitive scene would be over. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, I mean, uh, I don't remember what I was saying. Whatever. I, I, you know what? Look, when you see the, when you see him swinging around, I get why that just like completely throws you <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Also, cool. Um, flew through him doing my attack, <laughs> so I ended up in the, the electrified mess. <laughs> I wish that had killed you. <laughs> God, could you imagine? You have to start the whole LP over again because of that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I gotta say, the way they animate them dying, there's a lot going on. Mm -hmm. Another thing I like a lot more about this fight, it was about half the length of the other ones. Yeah, you don't. Re there's not really like points where it's just like, oh, you can't do anything. Besides this little spinny move. Yeah, the first one especially, I felt, was there were there was a lot of times where you just had to stay and wait. Yeah, you're just watching him run around. Especially just because, like, okay, I have to wait for the camera angle to function. <laughs> Love that. I saw an item back there that you missed. Yeah. Uh, well, so when you come back here, all of the items respawn again. So uh, you don't necessarily have to. Like, I think all the, like, fingerprint stuff might respawn as well. It's pretty minor. Nina Williams needs all of the essential oil shorts. It's true. You need uh, uh, the fingerprints of all ten of this guy's fingers. <laughs> right. Well, if you don't have all of them, how do you know which one's the right one?